the Joe Rogan experience. You get these opportunities to like obtain like a piece of wisdom if you can help it, you know, and um, it's always through this, the darker things or the things that are fucking annoying. Yeah. And lately I've been so aware of my lineage, like my family tree and like my parents, my grandparents, my great grandparents and me and then, you know, my my stepdaughter and you know if we have more kids like where i sit in this line of generational um personalities and habits and and where i see the mistakes and and where i want to make corrections and it, it's really powerful I, I mean you really have to look at yourself and the things you don't like and the things you you like or love and um it's a, it's a really defining moment lately like i i just feel my again, responsibility to what is most important. And there, there's like, I'm so proud to be from the family I'm from and like the kind of people. And then there's so many things I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> you know. Um, and it feels like a, a real job to like heal generational wounds and bad habits. And mm. uh, yeah, I'm just like, because I, I, if I, Whatever I can do, I want to give the best things to my children. You know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to be a good person. But I come from this really long line of hustlers. Like my great grandmother was a bookie. My great grandfather was a bootlegger. <laughs> my grandfather was a bookie and a prisoner of war for two years in Jeez. World War II. Like he was shot down from an airplane. Oh. And, like, he was a waste gunner, like, one of the most dangerous jobs you could have. And he got captured and, and like, he survived an 82-day death march and, and, like, made it back home to Cleveland. And, like, he married my grandmother, who was an excellent cook, and all the money he had from being a bookie, uh, they, they built this these restaurants in Cleveland with my grandma's recipes and, and it's amazing. Like the food's so good and it, it's like my family legacy and I'm just fascinated by those people. And I, I'm, I feel really lucky to, to be their granddaughter. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a fascinating fucking story. It's pretty wild. How did he survive? Oh man. Um, How did he survive the crash? He parachuted out. So he parachuted it out, mm -hmm. and then he gets captured. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. He, so he never talked about his experience until he was almost 80. So he didn't tell, like, my, even my dad, like, nobody knew what my grandfather went through. And he got inspired by somebody to, to finally tell us what he, like, to tell his family. And he took a year um, doing voice recordings with, with his sister, I'm pretty sure it was my Aunt Rita, um, to tell a story. And then, like, one day when I was in L.A. when I was 22, I got this book in the mail. And it was his, like, he gave it to our family so we could all know about what his experience in World War II was and being a prisoner of war. And, it, I mean, it was, I mean, it, I mean, I was bawling. It's like, makes me emotional just talking about it. Like, I, I he had finally had this moment where he felt like it was okay to tell everybody. And it was like very polite and, and sanitized. And, and then like by the end of his life, he really wanted to talk about it more and more in greater detail. But um, he carried one of his friends um, during that 82 day March because I, I can't remember where they were moving them, but it was, you know, like you walk for 82 days, like you can't stop to take a shit or pee. Like you just like, he had dysentery, he had lice, like he was dis he was filthy. And and I like actually shortly before he died, I went to visit him and and he was telling like he just wanted to talk and like tell me these things and um you know, I remember him saying to me like and he like looked me in the eye and he he was like you do not know filth. You don't know filth. And just being like if you stopped, they killed you. So you had to keep going. And uh, one of his friends, he carried him. And, and, and I remember this old man because my parents used to send us to Florida where, like in the summers where my grandparents lived. And we'd spend like two, three weeks with them. 
and it was awesome. But, you know, Grandpa was usually uh, watching The Sopranos with his headphones on, <laughs> and, like doing his own thing. <laughs> but, you know, they were, they were so Italian. Um, but his old friend was all like, I remember, I think it was, I, 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 like, I don't want to butcher this, but I think it was his friend, uh, Mr. Dragonetti. And like they were friends till their very old age. And, you know, they had this experience together, this horrible experience. Um, but like, you know, not to like ramble on unless you want to hear more about it. Like, I'm just so amazed at that sacrifice and courage and bravery and, and just fortune to survive and then to have a life after that. And then I think about somebody posting their fucking video about working too long at Starbucks. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck you. I'm sorry. Fuck your fucking feelings. <laughs> You're going to be fine. You know?